and then the prosecutor and the first defendant, and especially if you look at the And we, before I'm gonna introduce uh, our guest speaker, today, I will go through a little bit of um, uh, housekeeping to give him what he wants to let him know what we are doing, and here are the first defendants, a little bit of the background. Um, in, in innovation. We are a business unit of Lincoln University, and that's we are the innovation hub of the university. And we look at innovation in, in two, two ways. One, connecting things that when people are connecting, that's what we all imagine these events because um, last in the four digital attention for you guys are talking, connecting, but we are really looking for independent. Opportunities that when you connect with interesting collaborations and organizations, you really believe that we invest especially what we do. We have two long action events, we have organizing the operating co working spaces, and all that sort of we get involved in building and mentoring and start our businesses. Sometimes skipping. Um, oh, no. Of course, this is done by the team. So we have Joe in the background, we have Katie here, and we have Katie and Joe. So housekeeping, and I think it's important that there are no close examples no exercise. So if we get a parallel, it's a real thing. Again, I already put the show to Katie, to Joe, and myself. And we will actually escort you out to the building on that's the side. Or that's the part here to the left hand side. And as you probably notice, we are serving refreshments, mostly refreshments containing alcohol. Be careful and be responsible. Make sure that you come safe home. I think your family will be appreciated. Thank you so much. So, if you like what we do, please like us on the social media channels. And without the next video, we would like to introduce you to Professor Grant Edwards, he is the Vice Chancellor of Lincoln University. And he will actually kick off what we need to sustainability for all our events for 2023. And so we are really uh, grateful that the uh, Grant here to talk to us about the sustainability of the university. Thank you. Very nice and pleasant. Um, thank you, it's um, great to be here today to talk about sustainability. And what I hope to do today is to give a hint of the University commitment uh, to sustainability. And what we do as being a having a campus that is an exemplar of sustainability and an exemplar through our research and distribution. Um, I hope to leave you the impression that sustainability is very important to us. In what we do and a key part of where we are heading here at the university. And I also want to leave a little bit of impression is that probably, and this is definitely for our staff here, that Lincoln University should do everything it can do to commit itself to how we continue to inhabit the planet sustainably in the broader sense of the world. It is a place where we should be able to bring together a diversity of approaches from those that approaches to sustainability from those that are really based on highly technical solutions to those that are based on a more natural or eco-friendly type of approach. It is a place where we should be able to bring that together. And we should constantly work to make sure that anything we do here at the university in conjunction with partners actually reaches the right way and actually it works to have very effective uptake. Do. And I'll probably leave the impression that there is no other university in New Zealand that is a better place to address the very pressing issues around the climate, the sustainability, than this little specialist one in those universities, like the university. And that's where I believe we're here. So today I'll talk about uh, some amount of research, something about our education, something about our demonstration. We we'll also talk about our campus and what we are doing here, because that is a very important part of our sustainability. Um, I want to talk a bit about who we are, because that defines our commitment to sustainability as well. 
and sets them some indication of the size and scale and what we actually have to do. So we're a specialist land-based university. What does that mean? We focus on land-based industries and we have a focus related to that. We're interested in unlocking the power of land to enhance the lives and grow the future. That is what we are about as a specialist plan. And a commitment is to that both on a national and international level. We're nearly three and a half thousand head of students, probably growing to over the next decade to four and a half thousand students. We're 600 staff, which probably might get to 700 over the next decade. We set ourselves on a 58 hectare campus, founded on two sides by commission of by housing development on one side, on another part by farmland, and also by a really strong increase of research and education. And then we have, that's a 58 hectare campus, and then we have surrounding farmland on over 400 hectare, just media two campus. We are a focus on the land use universities and what we do, and we're very much about the specialization of agriculture, they all have a connection to our land. Ninety percent of the graduates that we produce actually have a classification of their degree as a connection to a land-based university. So it's a very important part of what we do, and we see that specialisation as a land-based university. It's very important as giving us access to international partnerships where we can address some of the pressing such as the Euro League and Life Science with partners like Hope and Sweet Agriculture University. They come to us because we have the focus and that specialization. That is why a commitment to sustainability is so important to us and a very similar thing because those are the things that are very important on the global space space and to New Zealand, things related to agriculture, horticulture, in particular. And as food and fire sector, as our tourism conservation sectors do as well. Quick facts about the university. <laughs> we have, I was the third oldest university in New Zealand, which celebrate our 150 year anniversary by this time. We're the 15th ranked small university in the world, US ranking. We have some really pleasing statistics. Those students that they come here. They get 19.5% of the completion rate, which is the highest in any university. Equally, our 84% graduate employment rate, which is where our graduates are entering into paid employment within six months of graduate, is the highest by some distance of any design university. Our graduates are entering for employment career. We have a mix of students coming from urban and rural populations. Okay, 60% of our students have a permanent postcode. That is defined as urban. We're not all the students in this place from the rural centre. Today's presentation is that 60 percent have an urban postcode as their permanent postcode. So we're getting students who come up out of that range. Trade staff, student interaction, which comes from part of the school, they have nine farms, which is where we and 17 research. Those are some of the driving features of the sustainability plan that we developed. Now, the sustainability plan had its inception with students. There were students in an environmental class who produced, came together in a project and said, while you have a sustainability plan, you do not have a plan for how the university wants to position itself in sustainability. That led to an action across the university in developing as Based a lot on what those students actually originally put forward and they're very grateful that they had And that kind of two goals. One about our research, education, and demonstration, simply on the farm. To be equity and sector leaders in those. That's about what we do and how it impacts on sustainability. Another bit is about what we do here on end. What we do with towards climate neutrality and what we do towards particularly biodiversity, waste, water, and natural care. And any campus being an exemplar of sustainable Two interrelated things, not quite the same, 
that's a very important part. And we basically need to look four things for our sustainability planning what we do with education, what we do with research, demonstration on our farm, and what we do in the campus environment. People see different perceptions and what is important, but they're all a key part of how we do it. There's always something that people want to know what is our energy approach around the campus to carbon neutrality and carbon reduction. Okay. And I'll put this here and give a little bit of context. This is started from 2019 to 2020. We're currently doing our, um, our carbon audit for 2020 to 2022. We're a little bit. Total maintenance in each of those years, about four and a half thousand tons of CO2 equivalent. The base of matter, no doubt, is our cold boiler, the two different thing in the middle of the campus. This is the big deep emission in 2025. Other emissions uh, coming into that, we have two, we have some for electricity, we have two emissions, and then we have some other components in this within the three So that's associated with our staff, but large and international, which is about in 2019, which is the last really normalized year of air travel, at 1,744 tons. Yeah, and then the three, which we actually are additional, which we actually have on the project, that's the travel of staff from two and from two. That um, was 1,174 in 2019. Some of those numbers have already come down. 2020, obviously, COVID year, international travel low, that's the example. But when we think about that, let's get some relativity here. What does that dairy farm produce in CO2 equivalents? Any idea? Great job. Thanks for the Our dairy farm, our one dairy farm, is um, two and a half thousand tons of CO2 equivalent for the domestic dairy and Australian farm. More and uh, many emissions, more is probably equivalent to our air travel. When we think about this from our perspective, that is why we have a really great commitment to actually being able to solve those problems of emission on our farms because there is a really big pressing need. And while we recognize doing stuff around campus, we need to really keep our eye on the ball here. But if we're looking at our targets of reduction in emissions, whether it's CO2 or nitrous oxide or methane emissions, and the targets of there is a lot of work to be done. Thanks. So that's why I highlight the projects today that are directed towards that because they are important to reflect upon that. So, to the farmer, our dairy farm produces more than our international travel in terms of. All right. The big thing that we don't have in there, functioning the university, is the travel of our students. To this place as international students. Now, the question I pose to you, and we'll come back to the end, is how do we get ready for that? As being a leading university on sustainability, how should we factor in how important those emissions are in our education? Because they would be, they are some of the things. Okay, so that becomes what are we doing and putting plans into action? The key areas that we have in research, we have case study in education. We want all our students to have sustainability as a key graduate action. That's what I'm looking for. Demonstration, we have a to see dairy farm as an example of dairy farm practices. We stand out some of them on the end of the farm as well. We want to do decommissioning of a cold water as a key part. We want to improve our green infrastructure, the water and biodiversity, waste removal, and mobility. And all of this in the as we go. First of all, we'll give you an example from our research, which is really leading. Okay. And thank you, Pete, Cameron, for providing this. This is a partnership between Mix University and Cape Research. We can really address some of the key emissions on the farm, particularly meat coverage, from the air point farms, which basically can out for about five to seven percent on an average dairy farm emissions. We have technology which is available. On eco through eco 
device and reduce that to really zero. And development function with um, between that university and Raven Sound to be commercialized through Raven Sound. Okay. Example of a partnership that took a long, long time is probably coming from clear technology, which was initially associated with uh, water reduction on the Okay, so the question you have now is why do we not see why uptake of that as a technology? And that is something that we have come to start. We really must look to see that where these technologies are available, we can progress them further into the online. So, a good example of technology being available. Combined with advancements and probably that is coming around um, nitrification, uh, sorry, uh, nitrous oxide mitigation technologies through inhibitor approaches, we have a few things in the back here that are highly significant for a tagline, a couple of the key part of the patients. Ethanol pumps, we found in the then, and nitrous oxide. Another example of where we're actually using our farms is the work done by Rachel Bride's particular on this campus representative regions. It's a slightly different approach to, um, I guess, where we are. Particularly a focus on examples of producing to, um, to water. We're using approaches based on origin, that cows, change of technology, and other approaches that another example of where we're working in space on farm in particular to make the change for key sustainability measures. Some cases it's water quality, other cases reducing the plant production and water numbers and finish. Really important advancements to make. There are other examples of where we're working on farm. Okay. So in actually then we have the integral health farm and wealth farm. A couple of in Gordon that pretty well. Whereas basically another approach to that. We have farm system approaches to incorporation of um, plant processing into dairy farming. And we're part of some national programs which are around um, looking at the approaches to regenerative farming system, uh, particularly the work done by Derek Moot and Alistair Black in front of livestock pasture systems. All these things are building a body of evidence around sustainability of our farming system using different approaches from highly technical solutions to those based forages and farm system approaches to the environment. Do you believe there's a missing piece of this goal? Is ensuring that these things are taking on more farms at the time. In education, this is important. So I'll spend a bit of time on this, of where we're at. This is the graduate attributes that we actually are going to exist. Look towards all our students and And Lincoln and University, we have quite a diverse, scattered graduate attributes across all the academic programs. And we are teaching to have characteristics of all our students that are aligned with this. We expect all our students to know sustainability. We expect all our students to be bicultural competent and confident. We expect we're going to expect them to be employable. We're going to expect them to ground and make research capable. This is a quite a shift from where we are. I'm sitting in the area of sustainability to ensure that commitment to sustainability is that every student coming out of Lincoln University will, in time, when this is implemented, have the characteristic that Lincoln University graduates know and understand sustainability, specifically in land system management. They have applied sustainable principles to the work globally and articulate the benefits of sustainable principles. That's all our students we will be seeking to across the university. That means it requires provisions to their programs, to courses, to a lot of hard work that has to be done to the system, as well as a real crystallization of what it actually is for the students. But it is a significant change and position. Of where we actually want to be around sustainability. That's it, but it's very important that we engage in that. 
I want to move now to some of the things happening around campus. Okay, with some of the big things. Um, I've got a small picture here, which is the boiler. Basically, this is the boiler. The boiler is to be decommissioned by the end of the pod in 2025. Is that right, Yeah. Early 2025, the boiler and the coal boiler. So that boiler, remember, had about I think four and a half thousand tons of CO2 equivalent associated with it, which is simply my question. And that is the most significant thing we have on campus. And the university is engaged in a major decarbonisation program to so bringing down the boiler, investing in infrastructure to be able to change and essentially everything we do here, heating to uh, this is not a piece of work that we're moving on in time. It's required um, heating replacement system properly in terms of phase one right to the wind and wood floors to the uh um, house floor. I'm not going to go to that much here and have it been on the top of the floor. And I've got one of those old water heaters. Which actually do and one of those buildings. So we want to actually get one of the buildings. Phase so three and four go into some other buildings that are simply to upgrade our heating to be in line with. Um, it's also we're doing cancel heat pumps uh, for the university as part of our heating system. And this is part of our overall approach on campus here of what we're actually doing around this agreement. New buildings coming online. Um, uh, science North, Science South, in particular, we can, through that process of construction of new buildings, bring in the latest technology of heating, new uh, ground source heat pumping system, and water on depth to be able to, and heat exchange system to be able to heat or cool our buildings, are examples of where we're Living capital there. Other things connected here in energy because this is all about not only knocking down the boiler, but we've got to produce that energy. And we've also got to work well to produce actually increasing in our supply of energy. Uh, we have um, since 2022, we have 100% of our electrical energy um, is um, sourced from the benefit of the more hydro scheme, it's wholly renewable, so we're carbon emissions, we've done that. Um, but we also invested in in solar. Uh, we have five restock installations uh, in place. Um, by so the big thing we're tracking at this point in time in the latest stages of our contracts around that is the brown mounted solar system, uh, which will basically, uh, in the agrivoltaic solar concept, which is basically where we're in a solar high enough to allow some form of livestock production. Or alternatively, by the important options to replace other things. They actually see hopefully by the end of the year, the first thing, by the end of this year, an annual energy generation three thousand seven two million. Mm -hmm. Okay, two point seven megawatts. Okay, so combined at the end, we expect to have nearly twenty percent of the campus electrical generation by. I think there's a really strong component to the And as Vice Chancellor, I'm really keen on this to be in our problem. Because it's one of our best demonstrations of sustainable practice that we're doing energy generation at Starbucks, that we're committed to a practice where that we're trying to attempt to combine it to energy gas with livestock production or profit and very much as part of the principles of sustainability. So key initiative that will come up this year. We have a, um, a lighting upgrade that's going on in terms of energy demand. I'm told that there's 2,360 light bulbs and convinced to have the future of the phase is why we can go into our own energy generation and we can get off the coal boiler. We substantially can reduce and energy um, demand as well and be very efficient. Otherwise, we're still going to have quite a bit of residual and those offset of the scheme 
to be able to achieve that target of carbon. Um, mobility. This is an eight campus fleet. Um, we've come, we've plumbed in here and not too pleased about, which is actually now flying out here and work vehicles. We've got to around those, and I'll probably state that. So our campus fleet, this is part of the land, plus considerable progress towards more cars that are either BEVs, uh, hybrids, or PHEVs over time, or fully electrical. We've made not much progress in our work vehicles. That's a set of constraints of whether particular work vehicles are available, but those that have those work vehicles now are available, use and align pretty quickly. Other hybrids are then need to plus their class. We've stalled in terms of where we've gone in terms of our emissions from our number And we probably need to do a bit better here. In terms of being exemplar of sustainability and trying to overcome some of the growth constraints that actually exist. The centralized booking system, the getting right size vehicle um, as part of the sheet will be actually interesting one here, which is mobility. What would today have with mobility of our staff? Just get the things in here that we've tried that haven't quite worked. Okay. <clears throat> and knowing that um, emissions to and from campus are about 1,700 um, tons of CO2. Yeah, they're incredibly important part. So that's our staff and students traveling to the moment. Based on the staff survey that was done in 2014. But actually, that's where it's set. <clears throat> we think some of the important things here are couple. We set up an initiative last year with PET, which was a carpool and cat, yeah, directed towards staff and students being able to, to, to get together and limited uptake of that. So to the background, that this time last year, we were about to go into the sort of a shutdown of COVID, which actually disrupted a lot of travel between on campus, but actually something that we had no had had poor uptake than we would expect. Worked hard on public transport. So a lot of our students, we have 600 students live here on campus. <laughs> we have, that means we have 2,900 other students somewhere else. About 15% of those are online, and then turn on the campus. You might nearly have 2,000 students coming and going on, campus on some places. Public transport, so it's hard to engage the lights of heat and on the, the, um, on the concessions. Bus fares are pretty cheap. Who wants to watch the bus now? Anyone know? Um, <laughs> oh, very good. A dollar and two dollar fares coming in once the government stops and stop, so dollar students. Yeah. So, record and it's a long time on a bus. Dollar. Okay, it's been pretty good as a launch. It's been to come out here. Um, Mainly, we've seen what has to be done to actually get our students on the bus. And that kind of comes to try and price it. It also comes back to availability of um, suitable routes, as well as timetable, both the bus and our own timetable here at the University of Rose. Still relatively easy to drive um, two months back. A couple of things down in the corner here <coughs> engaging activities directed towards returning to forms of transport, returning to recycling. Um, standing up electric um, charging points for the bus pool to recognize the many staff and students that take away the lock and other things. In addition to the lock and points there, which is quite sweet, have some standing um, for any other students. For staff, students, I imagine the staff and students from somewhere else as well, probably using on a regular basis, but there are some things changing for the students. Air travel is an interesting one. When I recognize the importance of air travel, particularly for staff, um, for progression of international partnerships, for publication, for conferences. Like the problem is COVID has taught us, however, is that there are different ways of doing that than what we have previously engaged in. That includes a greater getting things up to date 
all my computing, my budget things, and the one. We set our targets that relative to 2019, which was the last one last year, that we would have a 50% uh, reduction in our in our air travel emissions associated with that start, like the which is kind of a 30% reduction average over the period of time. Our task is that our emissions in Asia are relatively low at this point in time because they haven't been defined back at the start to actually go back on. We've introduced a 5% surcharge, which will basically on all air travel based on the first phase of this year, and that will be placed into a sustainability plan, in particular to support the initiatives about. Um, essentially, online conferencing, doing stuff so that you can donate to them. So, what I am really interested in is that time associated with when you normally would be traveling. So, from here to the United States, if you don't have to do that, or traveling home associated with jet lag, what you want to do at that time and be able to invest in your activities to support that if you're prepared to stay on an online conference for some sort of reason. I don't know. So we're directly to look at that. Water and fire, I'm going to share a little things on the um, What's up going on here? Here we do shut trees down. We have recently cut the trees down. It's probably will really not be the last trees that we can come across as part of the campus today. There are a range of activities that are closely located to the buildings. Sometimes have to kind of trees down to actually provide Safe sites in which work to access the building. Which is done it on the boundary of High West and Memorial Hall, where we're actually doing the major. We've also just some trees that recently been cut down across the road on, um, as we on Housing and Junction Road. This is in conjunction on developments of facility across the road, which is car parks and new glass house. I think we're searching as a big part of the Some of those trees are. A commitment to our landscape master plans, particularly to strengthen and advise the student communities for the areas. Um, we've got the green color of the and we will to support that. The campus is starting to look very different. Buildings are coming down, and as we build new ones, like sites north and sites north. We have to demolish the affair for this one. I'm not going to get a little bit of a response. I can see, I can see the blue bell in the center. Go on, I can do this. A campus will look for it and provides the opportunity to do the master to invest in biodiversity and to send our own campus to trade. Also, a strong commitment to water retention. And an example of those is that anyone like, in the future of main car park, which is queued up in the moment, um, but also the water retention and the biodiversity. It's a little one here, which is why I want to make a car park. This is over 561, just to turn on the game on them, which is also an example of the biodiversity and a small scale of water retention. And standing out of the things to fight this thing, but we are having a genuine commitment to campus to actually improve both the work and the other Right, I'm going to finish there and just see and just give you a list of some of the things that are still on the line. Yeah, it's a really crappy one. One is around international travel. For our students, we need to learn kind of where that really sits, how to make it, then where you need to see Other one is around our research, ensuring that everything we do around our research is an exemplar of sustainable practice. <laughs> are all our research laboratories across the entire industry <laughs> operating? I on my mind. Um, we need to do more about biodiversity engagement conferences, what we're actually doing with the benefits of biodiversity. And we actually need to do more 
about how we take that very best technology and implement that's developed through research and put that on trial and help us understand top one line. I'll leave it there and um, stand up. <laughs> French France is um, having been here since the mid 90s. They went through the stuff we now coming to fruition. Question around the biodiversity you can have good biodiversity and you can have bad biodiversity as well. So, can you give us some more detail around the sort of band between biodiversity and the specific zone? It's probably a direction of what is the next time it's ever been. Um, and that would be the direction I would give it around. Biodiversity around the But recognizing that in the farmers, certainly in the young farmers system, that we're well aware of that ecosystem. Functions associated with biodiversity, which may not necessarily be native biodiversity. But I guess from the campus, we may be very interested in native biodiversity wherever possible in terms of how we require how we don't spend enough time, including some of this that sort of rooted us uh, every time we plant here is produced by ourselves. Right? Yeah. So we believe we're going to see that. So, it's a good question, but that would be the question. Yeah, assume the plan around which is just biodiversity again on the farm. It's just a load of Yeah, there's an interesting question on the farms. So, each of our farms. So, our farms have a range of things. Research, demonstration from that. Across that farming perspective, that of biodiversity is very important part of it. That link university demonstration farm, which is actually a really good example of that of biodiversity as well. So that's that one scale. And another scale, we have things like you know, grants, which was about complete property and here. And that is the share of the first stages of the past to get about values in other places, actually in the integral health and well-being of the sort of national game, it was highly strategic time to sort of make the biodiversity threatened with a long time, which is directed to improve its stock count and all which nature very part of that. So it comes into a range of places. Right, it's great. The Vice Chancellor of Spain have been talking about sustainability because um, often it's in some way other things that's reported on the Vice Chancellor of Sustainability. It's more of a comment than anything. It's, it's the, the big international agenda and sustainable development goals is a really important vehicle by which universities can articulate where that's they see in terms of delivery of education, demonstration, research. I think it would be useful to really be able to frame what you're talking about here within Lincoln, within the context of the sustainability. Yeah, it's, it's a good point. Yeah, I mean, we do throw out a sustainability. We do we did recently produce a report. Actually, quite vital and we can actually most of those goals because we're actually going to be increasing the things on top. I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting commentary, though. So, we can have discussions that we're having um, at this point in time in Britain. In Spain, but I've got a European university, it's a combination of universities across Europe and the US. Their focus is a lot around not so much sustainable health, but also but that partnerships are based on keywords like bio, um, 
leading an approach to embodying the future. And so some of those things are the dialogue that we inherit, but you're right to be able to say but not recognize I would like to first speak on the evening of this great work by the Allen University. Awesome, by the way. Thank you for the talk today and telling us where things are at and the intention. All that's great. I hadn't realized that decade how much progress has been made and how that's differentiating what the university is about. Land based, I think, we will get. And we've had that and we understand it. But this particular nuance, I think, is a really good one for the university. So I think my question is, have you got a deliberate strategy to get that message out? Not only nationally, it's important, but internationally. And I think things like this will drive a project potentially from both onshore and offshore sources. Yeah, there's a little doubt that there's a strategy in the range of two So the example would be the so as it comes from the tribal teacher that we want to do some prioritization foundation on that strategy. That should be really and where we want to act. Mentioned the early good life sciences. The singular focus that you can have in some areas gives us access to international partnerships that you would not get as a high body of the same. So it is really more work to do there, Chris. And you didn't it. miss it out. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Oh, Grant, no, that was really good. Um, the bit that I'm really interested in is how it's resonating with students, students and the fact that um, I guess we've got a generation of young people that sustainability is to become a part of what they do. Is um, yeah, is there any feedback? And is also is that is that translating into the employability as well? So like, how how does that fit together? Yeah. Few things are made. So, okay, so I was looking at um, international students, um, and there was a survey done eight months ago on the things that are important to students in the US. Sustainability is about how to apply for that work to international students and an overall And that came about because things like QS ranking, finding your ranking. The priority information, whether it was quality information and sustainability, or we had a combination of sustainability and climate. But domestic students are pretty impressive. Um, students, different young people, and actually sustainability is the key thing. You haven't got the information on whether that's but what I think what is important for us at the university is that we're not only doing great stuff with educational research and the project is doing fascinating research, but we've got to be a really good example. Because we don't, it's not a good example. Council stand up as well as we Is it improving the employability? Well, at the moment, within six months, 80, 84 percent of the employment is quite as bad. Getting it out of the moment is that enough for the sectors that we support? So it's the workforce demand. Um, 
sustainable and sustainability it's getting overused and we're, we're in danger of, of just flopping this word around it's a bit like 50 years ago when I was teaching uh, school and and the word ecology when it was a word that had some meaning and then it got bastardized over time and we don't use the word ecology much anymore and we, we need to watch out for our publicity because all, all the, the greenwash um, um, private enterprise people are, are riding on the back of our, your, your genuine um, use of the word and, and it's going to get bastardized. It's already bastardized. And, and so we, we need to watch out for our publicity and the sorts of words we use and make quite clear we, what we understand by su sustainable rather than just flopping it all over the place. Thank you in, in terms of, thank you, David. Um, long session, definitely my honest, honest So I think in the sustainability, Essentially, leaving the world in a better state for the long term for sustainability. But if we're looking at simply on the there's all those elements of sustainability, financial, cultural, environmental, human resource, all kinds of systems. And so that would be there's a diversity of approaches. And you're right, we have to be careful about how we talk about sustainability and find an appropriate. On what our country and what do I was quite particular to say that we're especially saying about university, we expect to be contributing to the sustainability of land based Thank you so much. But thank you, Dr. Perhaps we can have lunch. You can give me a 
starting your own business uh, and can be coached by, uh, by Jason. Um, thank you so much for being here. Again, feel free to have a drink and eat and, and, and network or connect and but please drink for so free for the family of the same. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 